What's good ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the third and final installment for what if Deku was Superman, aka if he was Kryptonian, aka the most overdone what if on the platform, <laughs> other than Saiyan Deku of course, but we already covered that. <laughs> so um, yeah, if you want to watch Saiyan Deku, link will probably be up there somewhere. Anyways though, let's get into the video. Hey Ross, sauce it up. Izuku would be pleasantly surprised to see Shinso there, and so both of them would kind of nod. From here, the Aizawa agency, seeing as there's not going to be any conflict to cover, and even if there is, Izuku would completely molly, molly -wop them. Instead, what I'm going to be having happen is essentially Aizawa takes them with him to go out on night patrols and stuff like that while also teaching them to work on their weaknesses which he has noticed. Izuku would work on his fighting skills without using his abilities and he would also work on his stealth while Aizawa would also try to cancel out his quirk. But one of these days he would have ended up realizing that Izuku's quirk for some reason it just can't be cancelled. It's strange, he wonders why this is but decides not to question further just due to the fact that I mean it is what it is, the kid's quirk doesn't cancel it's probably a mutation. But Izuku, he can already tell what Aizawa was thinking. He wanted to cancel his quirk and Izuku could tell just by the fact that his eyes turned red and his hair began going up. So Izuku would pull Aizawa to the side one day and tell him, yeah, so you're not going to be able to cancel my quirk because I don't have one. Aizawa looks at him and asks confused with a smile on his face asking if he's kidding. But Izuku just looks at him with a stern face and says, I'm not. Aizawa sensei, I'm truly quirkless and I'm not from this planet either. That's where all my power comes from. Look above. As I would look outside to see, you see the sun. As I would nod and say, well, what, what about it? And Izuku would say, that's the source of my power. Every time that I'm near the sun, I grow stronger. I haven't flown out of this or, you know, out of the atmosphere too many times. But from what I can tell, I can breathe in outer space. It's strange, but it works somehow. Aizawa looks at him and is genuinely like, what is going on? This kid is actually from space. Like, he's not kidding. And so, as Izuku would tell him that, Aizawa would end up saying that he won't say anything from here. And Shinso would have been uh, nearby overhearing this entire conversation. As the very next day, he would end up asking Izuku about it, saying, so, alien, pretty interesting. You have any weaknesses I should know of? With Izuku simply saying, nah, not that he knows. He's pretty strong overall. Shinso just ends up deciding that, that's not a good thing, because what if he was to one day go haywire? And Izuku would say it's not a big deal, seeing as he won't. His, uh, Shinso would keep a keen eye on him, but eventually he would soften up to Izuku, and they would both end up creating a pretty decent relationship with each other, where Shinso has more of this serious personality, and Izuku is more like lighthearted, chill, and likes to be around people. That said, from here, like I said, they work on their frauds. Zuku practices his fighting style and Shinso works on his intelligence and stealth and strategies. Overall, they end up having a very solid agency. And yes, just in case you guys are wondering, Ida does end up dying. Because after all, he goes after Stain. And with Izuku not exactly being friends with Ida and not really caring about any of that, he doesn't actually end up getting involved and or helping Ida with Stain. So... He dies, and after this, Yue would be under immense pressure for about a month, with them being threatened to shut down. However, once it comes to the news that Ida was the one who purposefully went after Stain, the charges would slowly begin diminishing, with the media beginning to say that maybe it wasn't Yue's fault, maybe it was his own choices that led him there. And eventually, they would end up saying that it was neg negligence from Yue, but they would end up having to pay the Ida family a huge sum amount of money. But, you know, it is what it is. And the school would eventually come back after about a month or so when they return this would be around the same period of time that the final exams would have happened and seeing as this is not exactly the most uh interesting part of the story i'm going to very quickly go right through it so obviously zuku studies for his exam just a little bit and he ends up acing it due to having an insane iq that said he would end up actually after that 
going to just watch as everybody else has their usual fights between student and teachers. But Deku's different. He fights a little bit different, and by that, I mean that Izuku's test isn't going to be fighting against one teacher. It's going to be fighting against all of them at the same time. And I know this might sound like, wow, all of them at the same time? That's kind of interesting. Maybe this might actually be a challenge. But my man Superman has fought against the Justice League. And I'm sorry, but the Justice League would just destroy these heroes. So there is just no way that Izuku is going to be losing this fight. We would start off with All Might rushing and trying to hit uh, Izuku without any weights. And none of the teachers would even begin holding back. Aizawa would try jumping in and using some of his hand-to-hand -hand combat, but he gets completely outclassed and thrown to the side by Izuku. All Might gets outclassed in terms of physical speed, and Cementos would try to encase Izuku in something. However, Izuku would use his heat vision to blow a hole at the top and punch straight out as he would arrive outside and we would see Midnight begin using her pheromones to try to knock this man out. Except Izuku uses his super breath and blows everything away. Like all of that, all of that um, smoke that was trying to be used against Izuku would, would counter the heroes. And by that, I mean that the heroes would actually be hit with it. But seeing as they're all wearing masks to counter its effects, they are not exactly affected by this. So Izuku would go back in and begin to pretty much pummel them all down, getting a complete beatdown on all the teachers, with the exception of Nezu because he understood that there was no way the heroes were going to win either way. So after this happens, the teachers all kind of have a little bit of a hit to their ego, thinking to themselves that it was like 10 of them and one of him. Like, this is insane. They had the symbol of peace at their side. This kid is a monster. Nezu himself would be thinking about how dangerous it could be if Izuku was to have become a villain or something like that. But he puts that to rest and eventually the forest training arc would commence. Now before I get into it and you guys are like, oh my god, I can't wait for the League of Villains to attack them. Keep in mind that doesn't end up actually happening this time. Because if we really, really stop to think about it, Izuku changed the story quite a bit. And what do I mean by that? Well, remember back in the USJ when Izuku took out Shigaraki and threw him in jail? Yeah, he's in jail and he's not going to be anywhere near the heroes to make his little, uh, his little attack on the forest camp. So it's a normal camp. Izuku ends up training with Class 1A. He ends up doing a, bit of, a little bit of training with uh, Shinso since he's a part of Class 1B. And overall... Everybody ends up getting a pretty cool experience out of this with them all having their quirks tested with the exception of Izuku. With following these events, having the provisional hero license exam right around the corner. But if I'm being completely honest, there is no high stakes here. I mean, in the original, kind of, because Izuku is not that strong and we never knew how these things were going to go. But I mean, let's be honest. The first event is throwing balls at each other, and Izuku is not going to be having any trouble dodging them. I mean, the man can move at supersonic speeds. That's not an issue for him. He's immediately able to tap somebody with his uh, with his balls, and he takes them out, leading to him actually winning very, very early on, and then being sent to the waiting room, where he now has to watch as everybody else has to finish doing their own thing. Eventually, they have to do their saving with uh, everybody else, like has to save the fake injured people, and he does it flawlessly. He even ends up soloing Gang Orca by himself, by simply, you know how Gang Orca shoots out his, like, his noise? like that that sound wave izuku literally shoots his breath at it and it cancels it out like bro that's op but izuku by the end of everything ended up getting his provisional hero license bakugo fails because he's bakugo todoroki fails because he's bakugo and everybody else ends up passing that after this we have the eventual meeting of the class uh the class 3a heroes Mirio, Tamiki, and Nezre. They all introduce themselves to the class as the big three of UA, and Aizawa actually ends up telling Izuku that he could learn a thing or two from this kid Mirio. Mirio looks to Izuku, and keep in mind, this version of Mirio doesn't have one for all, because All Might genuinely took to heart what he said. He remembered his roots and how he himself was a quirkless individual who grew through the ranks, and he thinks that maybe he could find another kid with ideals similar to him to become like the next number three hero or something. Seeing as Mirio already is probably going to become the number two pretty, pretty soon. So All Might simply would begin looking for a quirkless successor with a brilliant heart and, you know, the goal to want to become powerful and save people. Someone similar to what Izuku was like in the original events of the story. And I'm going to be honest, there's quite a lot of people like that in this world, if I do 
if, if we really think about it, 20% of the world is quirkless. So while that might be hard, it's not going to be impossible. That said, he ends up finding his own candidate for becoming the symbol of peace or whatever eventually. And yeah. So Mirio still ends up challenging the entire class. However, he actually ends up challenging them all separately, with the exclusion of Izuku not being part of them. Because if he truly was, he would molly up Mirio. I don't want to hear it about Mirio's permu per per permutation, permutation or whatever. Whatever it is, his ability is. Pure, per per me. Oh my god, why am I having such a hard time saying his quirk name? But you guys know what I mean. Even if Mirio was to hypothetically use his quirk to pretty much go through the ground and pop up unexpectedly, Izuka could read this man Mirio like a book. I mean, he saw the Flash moving as if he was going in slow motion when he was attacking him in the Justice League movie. So somebody like Mirio, who doesn't have half that speed, should be a walk in the park. Mirio would try it after taking out the rest of the class, like phasing through the ground and popping up with an uppercut, but Izuku just dodges and Mirio watches as Izuku just outclasses him in speed. He ends up hitting him in the stomach, sending Mirio crashing outside of the building, and when Mirio comes to, he is like, what happened? With everybody explaining to him that it was fast. I mean, he blitzed at him, and then Izuku punched him square in the stomach without him even having the ability to react. Mirio, after seeing that, would be like, you are awesome. He begins having the utmost praise for Izuku, and he would end up inviting him to his agency, which revolves with Nada. Now, when Izuku ends up arriving there, Nada actually tells him that there's one requirement, make him laugh. And this Izuku would definitely be able to make him laugh. He doesn't actually end up doing the All Might face impression like our normal Izuku would, and instead, he would end up doing something else. I don't know what could possibly make Sir Night I laugh, but he does something that makes him laugh, and it works. So, suffice to say, we now cut to Mirio and Izuku doing their patrol, right? And just like in the original, the airy stuff happens, except this time it happens a bit differently. This time, Izuku arrives because he hears airy in panic. He can hear what's going on. He has super hearing, after all. So, when Izuku hears a small girl in distress, he immediately flies over towards the alleyway and would see Kai Chisaki, or Overhaul, pretty much running after her, trying to keep her away. Izuku would land right in between both of them, with Overhaul asking what a hero is doing here. He would say that it's just his daughter running away, and Izuku would say, Honestly, I don't quite believe that's your daughter. Chisaki would give off intense murderous intent, but Izuku is not having any of this. Izuku pretty much goes towards Overhaul and begins to tell him to walk away by putting his hand on his shoulder, but Overhaul begins to pretty much put his hand on Izuku and almost touch him, but Izuku pulls away and Overhaul gets angry before he then proceeds to touch the ground and send spikes flying at Izuku's direction. Izuku dodges all of them and ends up noticing that one of them was going to hit Eri. Luckily, however, Mirio jumped in right in the nick of time and saved her, and Deku just turned back to Overhaul saying his quirk has to do with his hands. Looks like he's not going to be using those for a while. Izuku would blitz right in front of him, grab him by the wrists, and like shatter them. He just squeezes Overhaul's arm, shattering this man's wrists, and leaving him to scream out in pain as what just happened. Just, you know, it happened. Following this, Izuku would look to Mirio and ask him if she's okay. And the girl would nod before Izuku gives her the brightest smile that could light up a room and he would then tell her that she'll never have to be scared again. Telling her that he's going to be her big brother from now on. With Eri giving him the biggest smile ever and Izuku and Eri just both getting along. From here, we end up cutting to Overhaul being thrown in Tartarus and having, a, uh, having his quirk cancellation bullets terminated. Seeing as, you know, they weren't about to do anything to him. So, yeah. That ends up going down, and from here, we end up cutting to the very next event that happens in, well, UA. The UA School Festival arc. Now, the way that I see this going down is Izuku is not going to be forgetting the stuff like he would have in the original. Keep in mind that in the normal events of canon, Izuku forgot his things, and therefore ended up running into Gentle and La Brava. But this time, that doesn't happen. Izuku is more than smart enough to keep in mind that he has to bring a couple of things. And so, he does so. 
resulting to them having a pretty successful festival up until when they were all about to perform their you know their iconic show however that's when gentle arrives at the top of the building and before he even has a chance to like announce himself or turn on the camera izuku notices him and hears his intentions of ruining everything by being a dastardly criminal and izuku would simply proceed to essentially fly over there at supersonic speeds and just grab la brava and gentle by the heads and slam them into each other causing them both to be knocked out he just leaves them there until the end of their performance and then takes them to the authorities for them both to be taken into custody <laughs> which honestly it's pretty funny when you really think about it from here, we have the pro hero arc, which eventually, which essentially was the time when Izuku, Todoroki, and Bakugo all worked together under Endeavor. But instead, Izuku and Shinsu are going to be working under Aizawa once more, stopping a bunch of criminals from doing a bunch of things. And Izuku would get huge popularity rankings from people all over because he's able to stop villains as if it's nothing. It's a walk in the park for him. Izuku's parents, they're so proud of him. I mean, they couldn't have expected any more from their baby and they're just just happy how else do i put it they are ecstatic that's all i could really say following that we end up jumping to the joint training arc and i love arcs like these where the students end up actually fighting against each other because i don't know they're they're just fun to me but izuku's team would end up going up against class 1b's team which would include, okay, so Izuku's team is going to be Araka, Min Mina, and Mineta versus Shinso, Monoma, and the other three background characters. Why is it five? Because Izuku's on one team. So they kind of try to even things out a little bit. That said though, the way that I see this battle going down is essentially Shinso would try to use his brainwashing quirk on Izuku by using his stealth and the things that he would have learned from, well, Zawa, but Izuku is able to use his x-ray vision to pretty much locate Shinso's location and appear behind him asking him what he thinks he's doing. Shinso would be shocked and use his scarf to pretty much grapple away uh, to another location before Izuku appears before him once more and tells him that it's not going to be working ever again before he then appears in front of Shinso and crushes his device that he uses to change voices with. As Izuku tells him that yeah, He's getting thrown in jail. And before Shinso knows it, by the time that he blinks, he appears inside the cage, wondering how that happened so fast. But he would simply look down and think to himself that, yeah, Izuku, he's just too broken to be stopped. He would then go on to obliterate the rest of the team, and everybody watching, including the Pro Hero Commission, would be thinking that that Izuku kid, he has some quirk. They would end up coming to a, a, a concession, which would end up being that Izuku is honestly way too powerful to even be in the pro hero course anymore and so they end up deciding to make him debut as a pro hero early on with a couple of months of training ahead of his class in a special course that's going to teach him how to run an agency and do things like those those types of things now the meta liberation army it's still a thing so how do i how do i cover that how do i cover that Okay, so Deku is obviously going to be a hero, right? And as soon as he does become one in a couple of months, he begins rising through the ranks. Keeping in mind that the League of Villains pretty much got shut down in the USJ arc, they're not there to actually take out the Liberation Army. So what ends up happening is the Hero Commission would actually task Izuku with taking out the Hero Liberation Army. And what ends up happening is Izuku, he agrees. He's like, sure thing, I'll get that done for you by sundown. Izuku would fly towards their direction and bust in through the windows of the area where the main villain is at. And all of the other villains could not have been none the wiser. I mean, Izuku busted in so fast, nobody could even notice. But Izuku then goes to the leader and asks him what his whole organization is here for. He explains his goals, his, his thought process, and why he's doing what he's doing with him saying that Redestro's ideals are going to live on no matter if he kills him. But Izuku would look to him and say, kill you? Dude, I'm not a villain. I'm not about to kill you. He says, I'm too good for that. And then the villain would say, good, because I'm not too big for that. As he begins using his quirk and growing in size, pretty much destroying the top of the entire area, leading to Izuku saying, so it's going to be like that then. Fine. As from here, Izuku decides to pretty much punch him and grab him by the neck and fly him 
all the way to the atmosphere of space to the point where Reed Destro could not even breathe anymore. And once they were up there, Izuku would simply look at him once before then asking, are you done? And Reed Destro, he's just getting purple in the face. He's like, <laughs> like he can't breathe. And he's like, yeah, how can you? But that's like, that's all he can finally say before passing out. And Izuku flies him back down to the Meta Liberation Army, in which all of them just watch as their leader is being held by the, the throat by this hero. He would end up telling them to each of them individually turn themselves in, saying that they should not try anything funny. The ice user from the Meta Liberation Army would shoot his ice at Izuku's direction, and Izuku would shoot his laser beam right at it, causing it to just get destroyed in the process, with Izuku telling him that he's not playing, that they have one choice and one choice only, before then shooting a super breath at them, knocking a bunch of the people back in the front row, and then proceeding to shoot into into the air with his uh with his flying ability to simply take Redesha to prison following this the authorities would arrive and they would begin to end up actually taking them to prison and a lot of them would be taken out in a very uh a hard manner i guess you could say because a bunch of them tried fighting back but izuku and a bunch of other pro heroes being present for the incarceration of the villains would make things run as smooth as butter that said, though, we pretty much end up cutting to a kind of ceremony for Izuku after he ended up getting paid after getting paid his first million dollars for being a hero. Izuku gives half of his check to his parents and ends up giving a huge speech where he pretty much thanks everybody, all of you, for watching this video to the end. Thank you guys so much for tuning in for the first, the second, and the third installment. We all knew this series wasn't going to be a long one, but it was great while it lasted, and I genuinely had a lot of fun with the first, second, and third part of this series. If you guys end up watching this in the full movie version, make sure to comment down below that you're here and hashtag full movie that you made it to the end. That said though, I love each and every single one of you guys. Remember to become a member if you want to get early access to my videos sooner. But with that being said, I love each and every single one of you guys. It has been your boy Zether and I am out. Peace.